Introduction to Neural Networks for Java, Class 1, Part 3. Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Introduction to Neural Networks for Java. This is Part 3. If you're just joining us, you may want to check out Class 1, Parts 1 and 2 before reviewing the material in, contained in this video. In this part, you will learn how to create a simple neural network. Before we learn to create a simple neural network, let's look at a simple neuron. Here you see a simple neuron. This neuron embodies everything that we're going to learn about in later chapters of this book. Here we're going to look at them in a very simple sense, but every neuron that we see later will have the same basic principles as this one here. You can see there's two elements really to this. The first is the weight, 1.5. This number is multiplied by whatever the input to the neuron is. If the input is 1, it's going to be 1.5, continuing on to the threshold. The threshold controls whether the, neural ne the neuron is going to fire or not. If the input times the weight is greater than the threshold, then the neuron will fire and continue onward. Here we see the first neural network of this course. It's made up of three neurons, and these neurons function similar to the simple neuron that we just saw. A neural network essentially works by accepting input. This neural network accepts two inputs. They come in through the two input neurons. Then there's an output neuron. The output comes out there. This neural network has two input neurons and one output neuron. Essentially, that's all a neural network is. It accepts numbers and it produces numbers. As we look at more complex neural networks in this book, more stuff will happen in between. However, the basic principle becomes the same. Data is inputted into the input neurons and output through the output neuron. This neural network is designed to recognize the AND logical function. You see the truth table for the AND logical function here. It's a very common programming concept. AND accepts two inputs and produces an output. AND makes very sense in, in English. I want this AND this. That means you need both things to be satisfied. As a result, the only row where the output of the AND is 1 is where both, the input, both of the two inputs are also 1. This neural network is designed to function the same as the AND. If the two inputs are 0, then the output is going to be 0. If the two inputs are 1, then the output is going to be 1. For example, if you feed a 0 into both of these, the weights here are 1 and 1. Well, that's 1 times 0 is 0. So 0 is going to be passed on. 0 is, not below, the thresh zero is below the threshold. So this is going to produce a 0. If you pass a 1 and a 1 in, then both these weights are going to have a chance to pass on to here. So 1 and 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 is greater than 1.5, it will fire an output and it's functioning as an AND. If just 1 is passed in on either of these, then you're going to get 1 or 1 from here. It's going to be 1, which is below 1.5. It won't fire. This neural network functions the same as the logical AND. Let's look at a second neural network. This one has a very similar format as the other. It has two input neurons, one output. It's designed to recognize and function the same as the OR logical operator. The OR logical operator is another very common programming concept. I want this or this. That means one of them has to be true for it to be true. If neither or not, if both are false, then the OR is going to be false. In all other cases, though, the OR is satisfied. If either one side or the other is true, the OR is satisfied. If both sides are true, it's satisfied. The setup is very similar. However, the threshold is lower. This makes it easier to satisfy this neural network. If you pass in a 0 for both inputs, 0 and 0 is going to be 0, which is below the threshold. It won't fire. If either side is 1, though, 
then the weight of 1 or 1 is going to pass on. 1 is above the threshold of 0 0.9. It will fire and function like the OR. If both inputs are 1, then 1 and 1 is 2. That's obviously greater than 0 0.9, and it will fire. As a result, this neural network functions the same as the logical OR operator. Here we see a more complicated neural network. Just like before, there's an input layer and an output layer. However, there's an additional layer in the middle called a hidden layer. Neural networks can have zero or more hidden layers. Most commonly, a neural network will have either one or two hidden layers. The hidden layer is necessary to function as the exclusive OR operator, as we see here. The exclusive OR operator is used in programming, however you may not have encountered it, so let me review its functionality. Exclusive OR requires that the inputs be different for the exclusive OR to be true. If it's 0 or 0, it's going to be false. 1 or 1, false, because they agree. However, if the inputs disagree, then the output from the exclusive OR is going to be true. The exclusive OR requires this hidden layer to be solved. Now let's put the XOR neural network to use. We're going to pass in 0 and 1. 0 causes both of these to pass on 0 to the two hidden layer neurons. 0 is below both thresholds, so nothing further will happen as a result of the first input neuron. However, we're going to pass 1 into this one. 1 will pass now onto both of these. 1 is below the threshold of 1.5, so this neuron is not going to do anything. 1 is above the threshold of 0.5, so this neuron is going to pass on its 1. 1 is true. The XOR is going to be true. This neural network is functioning the same as the XOR logic operator. Now, the XOR is used many times to test simple feed-forward neural networks such as this. It's almost like a hello world program for neural networks. We will see it in later chapters when we use training methods to train neural networks. You may wonder where all these numbers come from. These numbers were handcrafted to create the XOR network. However, usually neural networks are far too complicated to handcraft all of the numbers. There can be many neurons on each of these layers and it would be com completely cumbersome to try to handcraft these. As a result, training algorithms are used. Training algorithms allow the neural network to have the expected output specified and the input specified, and the neural network sort of magically transforms these numbers into such a way so that it will produce the necessary output. We will learn about training algorithms in a later class session. This concludes class session one for Introduction to Neural Networks with Java. Please check the class website given here for any assignments which may be related to check your understanding of this course material. We hope you will continue on with class session two. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.